Welcome to B Plus Overland, where we share with you all of the upgrades and changes we've made to our B Plus RV for full-time off-grid living and a trip down the Pan American Highway from Alaska to Argentina. Ours is a 2021 LTV Wonder Rear Twin Bed. That's the B Plus in the back, and it's built upon a 2020 Ford Transit 350 HD cutaway van with rear dually wheels. Come check it out. I'm going to share with you the systems that we've installed and the processes that we've come up with to always ensure we have good water on board to use. Um, we had uh, four main criteria to meet. Um, number one was to have safe water uh, that we could use and drink. Number two, we wanted good tasting water uh, to drink uh, and to cook with. Uh, number three, we wanted to be able to fill our system from non-potable sources, whether that was a man-made source or a natural source. And then lastly, we wanted a bit of uh, emergency water that we could uh, add to our system uh, when we couldn't source water otherwise. So how do we achieve those goals? Well, we have a pretty comprehensive approach uh, and it consists of the following. Uh, number one, in North America, if we're somewhere that has potable water and we can connect a hose to it, how do we do that for either continuous um, flow or to fill our system? Number two is when we're in Latin America and there's a man-made source, uh, how do we connect a hose and fill our system from that? Number three, how do we fill our system from a natural source? And lastly, when we can't find any water, how do we augment what we're carrying with the emergency uh, water that we carry up top? Then I'm gonna move into sharing how we filter and treat water before it goes into our rig. And then after that, we, I'll share with you how we filter it yet again when we're getting ready to cook or use it for drinking water, and that's using an internal filter system. Then I'm gonna move into um, how do we clean our filters periodically? And then how do we shock the entire system uh, in our van to keep it clean? And then lastly, I'm gonna share you, with you uh, tips and tricks to um, conserving water uh, so that you can stay in remote areas for longer periods of time. So before I jump in, I do wanna start with uh, one kind of umbrella subject is know your water. Uh, and if you don't know its source, um, then treat it with great suspicion. Um, where we came from back in the United States, the city uh, had really good water, uh, deep wells. They sent uh, all the residents an annual report, um, well by well, um, and, and it had high marks. They put chlorine in it, and we used a carbon filter in the house and removed the chlorine before drinking or cooking with it. Um, in houses that I've owned that are on wells, always had the water... Um, uh, tested, tested in a laboratory and uh, in all cases I've had a simple uh, filter all the way up to in one house I had to have a reverse osmosis filter um, to to make sure that it was really um, you know clean and potable so if you don't have that kind of information and somebody just says it's potable or they've painted on uh, next to the hose bib that it's potable based on what so be very suspicious and uh, if, if you don't know, just assume that it's not potable. So before I go into the different uh, fill scenarios, I'll jump a little out of order and go straight to the filtration system uh, that we use. It is uh, the unit that does the heavy lifting of making safe water for us. Um, you'll notice that it's, it's a big one. It's a whole house unit. That's the large canisters. Uh, we store it in the back. Um, the most critical, the third filter, the most critical filter was only available in the whole house size, so that's what we went uh, with. Um, what this consists of um, is a paper filter, which is, uh, I think, five microns. Um, they're uh, disposable. I think we put a new one in every about every four months. Um, the next one is a block carbon filter, a big heavy one. Um, it is rated at, I believe, don't hold me to this, uh, one uh, micron absolute. And what does absolute mean? Well, in terms of filtration, if I just said one micron, that means it could be letting half of the things through at 1.5 and half at 0.5, but it averages out to one. But you've still got some things that are bigger than a, a micron. When you say one micron absolute, 
that means absolutely nothing bigger than a micron gets through. Um, so it does a better, uh, more reliable job of filtering. Um, you know, it's block carbon. It's going to take out uh, chlorine, chloramines, uh, heavy metals, bad smells. Um, there's just a long list of things, and it's kind of the, the standard uh, filter for any good uh, system. The last is the one that does all the magic for us. After all that water passes through these first two and is polished and clean, we go through a ceramic filter. Um, now this one uh, is rated at 0.5 microns, which is tiny. Um, and that is the best filtration that we could come up with. Um, I'll also share with you how we treat water after we've uh, filtered it and then a secondary filter system that we have inside. So our first water supply scenario consists of, well, imagine we are back in the U.S. We're at a national park, uh, we're at a friend's house parked in front of their house in their driveway, or we're at an RV park and there's a hose bib and it says it's potable and... I have actually uh, good confidence that it's pretty clean water um, and it's not contaminated and it's been uh, pre-treated. In that case, and again, we do this so rarely, we would stay permanently attached to that for the entire time we're there. That is, we wouldn't be pumping water out of our tank and using our onboard pump. We're just simply going to attach the hose um, and to our rig and keep the pressure on and that energizes our system on an ongoing basis. So a few particulars, when you're attached to a hose um, on an ongoing basis and you're going to turn the faucets off inside and the pressure's going to build up, well, some systems are not calibrated correctly and they can be at way too high uh, pressure for your system and they can blow out uh, the plastic plumbing fittings in your rig. Um, so to prevent that, we have a high quality brass um, pressure regulator and I've got this cranked down to I believe 50 pounds and that means that no more than 50 pounds can pass into our rig um, and you'll notice on all of our fittings we use quick fittings here and here and there and there it just makes it easy to hook up and and, and also to put away and then uh, that of course runs through our filter system here and then over here on the side this is our fill or supply into our system and up here, if I was filling the tank, I would rotate this and it would start filling the tank. But in this case, I've turned the water pump off. I've kept this in the supply mode. And all I have to do is go down to the hose and turn it on and it pressurizes our system and doesn't take anything out of our tank. So the next scenarios I'm gonna share with you have to do with um, non-potable uh, water sources or suspect water sources. Um, so in doing those, again, we're going to, as always, filter using our three filters before it goes into our system, but we're also going to treat the water. So uh, why is that? Well, if it's really bad water or it's got a bad pathogen in it, at 0.5 microns on this ceramic filter, we're getting most everything, but it's not absolutely everything. So there are things that are smaller than 0.5 microns that can get through. At that point, my research showed me that I could do one of two things. I could use a UV light to disinfect it uh, further, or I could chemically treat it. And for us, and I'll show you why as this progresses, uh, chemically treating it gave us a lot more flexibility and really worked uh, better uh, in, in meeting our needs. So what will we use to disinfect? I think the first thing that comes to most people's minds, whether you're a sailor uh, or an RVer, and uh, have experience with trying to disinfect water in holding tanks is chlorine bleach. Put a cap full of bleach in. And uh, that's where I was. Um, so uh, my preferred product, which I don't have right now, which is chlorine dioxide, uh, I'm getting some more next week, uh, has put me in a position where I'm back to using chlorine for a few weeks. Um, now when I say chlorine, uh, this is chlorine bleach and we're very careful to check the label that there are no fragrances or other chemicals put in here. Um, we don't want all those additives in our, um, you know, in our drinking water. So just plain old chlorine bleach. So for today, what I'm gonna do is, and according to CDC guidelines for 32 gallons of water, and we're empty, I'm going to fill a capful uh, of bleach and I'm going to add it to this empty hose 
and then I'll just reconnect this. I'll turn the water on and it will mix the chlorine into our tank and our system at the right uh, ratio. Now, starting next week when I go back to chlorine dioxide, well, what's the big deal with that? Um, well, number one, um, it's uh, odorless, uh, it's tasteless. Um, number two, it's super stable. Uh, with chlorine, when it starts uh, eating up microbes, uh, bacteria, viruses that might be around, um, it, it, it really uh, decays very quickly and has a short uh, shelf life. With chlorine dioxide, even if it's doing some of that work, it has a super long uh, shelf life. Uh, don't hold me to it, but I, I think it's one or two years if you properly store it that the water is still good. The other reason is um, slime. Um, if you've ever messed with a water tank or water fittings and taken something apart or filters and you're like, ah, it's kind of just a, just a little bit of slime in here. That's bio slime. And what chlorine cannot do is, well, what it can do is it can disinfect the surface of that. What it can't do is go to the next level and get down into the other you know, molecular levels um, of the slime and kill what's behind it and get it all cleaned out carbon, um, uh, sorry, uh, chlorine dioxide has the ability to penetrate into the slime in all parts of your system and keep it completely clean. So a uh, huge benefit. So our next water source would be from a natural water source. Um, and that could be a, uh, a creek or a river that we're parked next to. And in that case, uh, I can take uh, one of our four or more uh, two and a half gallon clear plastic jugs and go and fill it out of the stream. Um, if I didn't have that and uh, water was farther away, I could get our e-bikes out and uh, I can put the side saddles on them and I can uh, put one of these in either side and I can go pick up five gallons of water uh, if I had to, 10 or 20 miles uh, from where we are um, if the need dictates. The other way we can collect water is not using the plastic bags, but we carry a 100 foot collapsible hose and a battery operated um, pump and we could actually pump from a nearby uh, river or creek up to our rig and filter it and get it in. So I'm going to show you an excerpt of uh, a little more than a year ago of us collecting water uh, in a stream in Baja and then I'll come back and show you how we put it in the rig and uh, also how we use the pump with the 100 foot hose. So when we're drawing our uh, water from a natural source uh, before we filter it, we're always looking for running water. Sharon's uh, found a great spot, a uh, little mini waterfall, the water's clear. Uh, we're in Baja, Mexico, we're up in the mountains, way up in the mountains. This is a spring fed um, creek. Uh, it's just stunning here. Uh, it does have growth in it, there's cattle around, um, cow pies you know, on the shore, so uh, there's contaminants that we need to get out. So we're filling our uh, plastic bags. And we've got four of these, and we'll haul these just a short ways up to the rig, run them through our battery-powered uh, pump and through the filtration system and into our main tanks. So once I've collected uh, water from a natural source uh, in my water bags and I've brought them back to the rig, um, I've got a slightly different setup here. Um, I've got a uh, short hose uh, connected to my battery-operated Ryobi uh, water pump. This water pump uses the same exact battery that my cordless drill uses. So it just goes in the back. It was a little bigger. It had a, 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 a enclosure and feed on it. And I tore all that off and made it a lot smaller for storage purposes. Um, and then I'm, and I'm using, uh, again, quick release um, fittings. And it makes it uh, pretty easy uh, to set up and put away. Uh, I will say I made the mistake of uh, thinking some fittings were brass. They were aluminum made to look like brass and uh, all of them have failed, even my spare. So uh, when I get my chlorine dioxide next week, I'm replacing all of them with quality solid brass fittings. Um, the other end of this um, is going to go into the bag here. Now I will warn you this drill is really loud so you don't want to do it first thing in the morning in a, if you're around other people. So all I have to do is turn this on, stick the hose in, and it just starts drawing the bag down. Going through the pump, through here, and into the rig. And then I've already uh, loaded a little bit more um, treatment chemical into the line. 
Okay, that's it. I've emptied the bag. I'm ready to move on to the next one and the next one until um, I've put as much water as I think I need. So we have another way of filling from a natural source if we're close enough to it, like we're parked near a river or a, a creek or something. Um, and we're gonna be here for a long time. We don't wanna be, if we don't have to, going down and filling 12 jugs of water and, and, and hiking it up back to the rig. Um, so what we can do is we can relocate our pump and run the 100 foot uh, collapsible hose that we carry on down to the, to the water source. So what we have, is down by the river we'll have the pump, a three foot uh, section, and a uh, sediment strainer here on the end. I can put a rock on this and this can sit down in the moving water. I hook it up to the pump. This is our 100 foot collapsible hose. I keep it tied up in the back so when it, when it is put away it's a lot smaller, it doesn't weigh much and it doesn't take up much room. I hook it up to the filter. I will have taken this off and I would have put my disinfectant in here. I'd open the valve, turn the pump off, then I'd go down to the river and I'd turn the pump on until there's water coming out of the back of the overflow. And then I just shut it off. Um, so one thing to know about these Ryobi pumps or any battery, battery operated pump is they do have limits in terms of their ability to lift water vertically. Uh, it took a lot of digging around and I found an unofficial number on this of its ability to maintain some pressure. Uh, uh, it maxes out at around 35 pounds. I don't think that I would try and draw water more than 20 or 25 feet um, you know, down to the river. It's just not going to have enough power um, to get the water up and then maintain pressure to get it through the filters and into the rig. So what do we do when we're in a beautiful remote spot and we run out of water and there are just no sources, just nowhere around to get water? Um, well, we do carry an emergency ration of water, five gallons and a blue jug up top. Um, it is water that we're careful to make sure is treated uh, with uh, chlorine dioxide so it doesn't break down because it's up in the sun all the time. And um, we want to make sure that the water is in a in a usable state. Uh, we don't want to waste any of it. So uh, we start with a clean jug and when we're filling uh, the rig, um, we'll also fill that jug and give it its own small dose of chlorine dioxide so that it remains stable up there. We'll rotate that water uh, probably every six months. Um, same like with our gasoline, we keep five gallons of extra gas up there and every six months or so we'll pour it in the rig and fill it again with fresh gas. So pretty fresh water. How do we get that into the rig? Well, we, we don't need to filter it. It's stable, it's been filtered, it's ready to uh, use in our system. So we're fortunate that we have what they call a winterization system. And this hose just sits in here and it's a suction hose. And all I need to do is rotate this blue valve and turn our water pump on inside, the one we use for normal water pressure and it's this valve diverts it and turns it into a suction action and i just basically stick this in the five gallon jug and suck it dry and that's going straight into our 30 gallon 32 gallon tank back there um, then when i'm done turn the pump off close the valve put everything away and we've got another five gallons uh, on board to use in the kitchen or the bathroom or whatever we need Okay, so we're in the rig now and we're in the galley um, and we're about to use the water we have on board. And, and, I'll, and I'll jump back to uh, when I shared, we had a decision to make when we were uh, filtering and treating non-potable water and putting it into the rig. In all cases, we're putting it through the three filter system, but after that we had to make a decision between a UV light or a chemical disinfection. The UV light, if you use the water immediately, is really a great solution. It's highly effective, but when you're storing water, especially in the tropics, uh, in a complex system, um, you've got clean water going in, but there's nothing to keep it clean. So if it gets slightly contaminated, bacteria and viruses can grow because there's nothing to stop it. Um, that's why it makes it a great solution when you're consuming it immediately, but for us, it just didn't work. Um, so we went the, uh, the way of chlorine dioxide. Again, it has a super long shelf life. 
Um, it keeps disinfecting all the surfaces, and if there was any slime, uh, biological slime buildup, it would it would work its way right through that and clear it up. So we don't have to worry about our tanks ever becoming contaminated. But at the same time, we don't want to drink uh, any chemicals. Even if we can't smell it or taste it, we don't want to be drinking it. So uh, the solution there is if we're going to cook or drink the water that comes out of our 32 gallon onboard tank, we treat it yet again and we use a smaller filter um, that is a carbon block on the outside and it is ceramic on the inside and it's also more highly rated than the big filters for um, uh, heavy metals. So it completely removes the chlorine dioxide and does a final polish and it takes pretty good tasting water and makes it really good tasting. So in terms of the installation, this is our main faucet. Um, this is uh, unfiltered. It's, it, we don't filter it second time. This is the unit that gets filtered a second time. So we fill our pots up, our drinking uh, containers. Basically, it's installed right underneath here right over here it's it's a little difficult to get to when you want to clean it you'll notice on the outside of all of the filters on the casings i will write the uh, name of the filter um, the part number and when it was last uh, changed um, so i don't lose that information so this just taps into our main line right here and goes off and then just feeds up to this faucet right here in terms of uh Water quality, like I said, it tastes beautiful. It's our preference. We don't have to buy bottled water. When we're hiking, we use um, these swell bottles. Um, we each have one of those and we'll fill it out of here. And then um, we have these insulated um, mugs that we use at night when we're driving, anytime we're inside the van. So uh, we have dedicated uh, containers for our drinking water. So what about uh, cleaning our filters and our system? Well, to start with the filters, the big ones, every six months or so, they're whole house units. Uh, we're not really pushing the volume of water through them that uh, they were built for. Uh, the one inside, the smaller one under the sink, um, we'll notice uh, that we're drawing water for drinking and you know the amount of water comes out uh, starts to go down and down. So we know that it's uh, kind of filling up with impurities and we need to take it apart and clean it. So cleaning. Um, with the filters uh, and with shocking the entire water system, we use a mixture of the chlorine dioxide. The name of the product is called Purigy. So that's what you're looking for. Uh, it comes in 32 ounce and gallon, and, uh, but we get the 32 ounce. Um, I wouldn't leave home without at least two 32 ounce containers. It's not cheap, but you don't use a lot. When you're doing the shock, when you're cleaning the filters, you're going to mix it in a completely different ratio with water. It's like it's one gallon of water and a whole cup of this stuff. Um, and then to that, you've got to add citric acid crystals. I'll, I'll leave a link to those uh, down below. It comes in a little envelope. You pour them in, you mix it up in the bucket, and then um, you start um, submersing the filters, the, um, the, the paper one we replace. The uh, carbon one, we submerse it and we scrub the outside and the inside tube of it. Um, and we'll let it set in the mixture for an hour. The um, ceramic one has uh, what they call candles. And I think there's five of them in there and they pull off. And um, with those, you actually get a scrub brush they give you and you scrub the outside of that and that gets rid of the impurities. And then you soak everything, including the canisters, uh, for an hour and that uh, chlorine dioxide will eat through anything. And then fresh water rinse it um, with clean water from your rig that you've already filtered ahead of time. For the rig, um, you're gonna do a similar uh, mixture in a bucket and the way I get that into the rig is I make sure it's full of filtered water and then I use the uh, um, the winterization pump where I take that white tube out I showed you for that we used to put the emergency five gallons in I just stick that into the bucket turn the uh, pump on and I pump it into the system I make sure I run all the faucets inside and out and get that solution um, all mixed in and on all surfaces and again you leave it for an entire hour and then you just completely empty the system and then we'll flush it using filtered water again 
we'll flush it, we'll empty it, and then we'll do our standard fill process um, where we fill it and we use a cap full of the Purigene. So I've talked a lot about how we replenish our water. Um, how about how we conserve our water? And it's taken a while for us to kind of come up with our, maybe this isn't our final solution, but it's where we are now uh, and it's highly effective. The first one, uh, if you saw my video on us converting from a flush toilet uh, using a black tank to a composting toilet, that was probably the most, it was definitely the most significant change. Um, that toilet was beautiful as porcelain, but every time you hit it on a regular flush, it used 0.9 gallons. Um, and we only carry 32 gallons. And if you put it on the uh, save water mode, it's still, every time you use it, 0.4 gallons out of your tank and gone. So now that we use a composting uh, toilet, uh, we use a tiny bit of water in a squirt bottle. So uh, once you've gone number one, you basically just squirt it in there so that it goes down the drain cleanly. Uh, and it's not even worth uh, really considering that as a source. It doesn't use that much uh, water up. Next is um, we use the most water at this sink right here. Um, we use a lot drinking and we don't conserve on that. We're, we're always coaching each other uh, to keep drinking water. Um, but when it comes to washing dishes, boy, or washing fruits and vegetables, you can go through a lot of water. And I've tried a number of different nozzles here, and we finally ended up on this guy. I'll put it down in the description, the name and the link to it. I bought one for here, and I bought one for uh, the bathroom sink. And it has two modes. You can crank it all the way down, and it's claiming some astronomical 98% water savings in this mode. And you kind of believe it when you start using it because it comes out as this super fine mist. But if we're on a beach somewhere or up in a mountain and we want to stay for an extended period of time, um, I'll take my time when doing the dishes and, and I will do them in this mode. The good thing is that it comes out in a pretty good pressurized jet, which pushes food and suds and, and helps you out. And, and also we want to make sure that we're using hot water from our hot water heater, uh, making sure that's turned on and that aids in using less water. And then when you're in a place like we are now where we've got access to easy water uh, fill-ups, um, I just rotate this and I go into the normal mode and that's about it. Um, I get three jets out of it and they still, I can't remember what the number is, but compared to a normal aeration, um, it saves a substantial amount of water. Um, that we've noticed, if we're patient enough, and we use it in the mister uh, mode, can save a lot of water. So there is one thing that'll use more water than everything else combined if you're not careful, and that is a shower. Um, we are fortunate to have a dry shower uh, inside, and then we have hot and water controls out here for an outdoor shower. Um, we use a uh, little suction cup on the side and that holds the shower head. So uh, I, I think probably everybody knows it, but I'll repeat it. Uh, you know, when you've got limited water, you wet yourself and you turn the water off. Um, you suds up uh, and then you use the water again and get the suds off and try and keep the water on for as uh, little time as possible. Um, it does help that um, you use hot water. Um, with our system, we have a Trauma Aquago and it is beautiful. It's propane powered and it has a setting of the four, uh, three settings it has um, that you can turn the hot water and it has a circulation pump and inside the rig it'll circulate the hot water such that you don't turn the hot water on here and then waste water waiting for the hot water to come through. It's already been circulating through so the minute you turn the hot water heat uh, on it's coming out and you're not wasting water waiting for hot water to come out. Um, and using hot water also cuts the suds and you can rinse off a lot quicker. Um, so on ours, I watched a lot of YouTube videos on the best shower heads and we ended up with this one. I'm not remember, remembering the name, but I'll put it in the description. Um, it uses a lot less water while still broadcasting a, a good stream. Um, and then the other thing I have on both here and inside is a quick thumb on off. So. I had the water on the whole time, but all I had to do is flick my thumb and turn it off. 
Um, so I'm not messing around uh, trying to get to the knobs down here and get it turned off. Just another little thing to save a little more water. Okay, well that was a lot of information to get into one video. I think I squeezed it all in. Um, we're coming up, up on uh, two years on the road, uh, 10 countries, and we've used all these systems. Um, and, and that's how we maintain our water security, if you will. Um, I will share that if you're somewhere that has a water supply and you're getting ready to move the next day and go somewhere new that you've never been before, fill up even don't do the ah, I'm half full don't worry about it. I'll fill up another day or two you really don't know what you're going to encounter and you might make the whole task of topping up a lot more difficult than it had to be